thank you to being here with me. Uh, first of all, how many of you are into management? Management? Yeah. Our managers. And how many of you are new managers? They have uh, started this year or the previous year. Okay, so uh, today we are going to explore uh, common software development challenges that, as a manager, we will face regularly. Okay, so. Uh, in this session, we will cover unrealistic deadlines, poorly defined requirements, a scope creep, lack of flexibility, and sufficient communication, inadequate resources, poor quality control, and team member turnover. So, how do we know if we are facing any of those uh, challenges or those uh, issues? Okay, basically, if you see that our team is working overtime, if they are stressed and overworked, if they are cutting corners, or the quality of the work is decreasing, or even adding new features to our project are taking longer and longer, there are signs that we are suffering any of the previous issues. We can also check the velocity of our project. It means that if the number of points, that uh, story points that we are achieving at sprint are decreasing, or the task completion rate, which means like uh, all the tasks that we, or the items we have selected in that sprint are not being completed, or even uh, we are facing new high risk tasks in the, uh, we foresee them in the near future, or the team morale is low, or there's even experience borne out, we should take action. So I'm Jorge Tutor, I'm an IT uh, manager, and we've been working as a project manager the last 10 years, uh, mainly. I'm also a, a Drupal developer that switched to the management uh, role. Uh, I work for Metadrop, we are a Spanish uh, a Drupal company. We are mainly based on, on Spain, and uh, we provide uh, corporate and enterprise uh, services, and we focus on complex projects mainly, so where management is key. So the first point, it's about unrealistic deadlines. And people under time pressure don't work better, they just work faster. So the challenges that we will face are stress and burnout, because basically uh, our development team will never meet expectations, because they are not realistic at all. They will be forced to sacrifice quality in order to meet deadlines. As a managers, sometimes, uh, because there is this last lack of time, we came to some trade-offs with the stakeholders that are not helping at all. Like, uh, if you give me more time, you can include more things into the scope. This is not helping uh, at all in the, in the project. When there is no time to think, we will start creating a lot, a lot of waste, like uh, several features that will never be used, and uh, probably the solutions that we are applying are not the best ones. As a company, we will have a wrong reputation, and uh, our clients will lose lots of uh, marketing opportunities because we are not going to achieve uh, the deadlines. What can we do? The first one is obvious, set realistic deadline. How? We need to take into account the buffer time. We need to take in, when we are estimating tasks, we need to take into account the analysis, the exploring, even unexpected delays like illness or dependencies with other teams. And it's key like the estimation should be uh, provided by the team, not by managers at all. 
A deadline is a shared commitment. This is not something that it's only on developers' shoulders. So stakeholders should also help in order to achieve uh, the deadlines. So in order to let them help us, we need to keep them updated on the progress of the project, be open. Better if we prioritize the task, or the most important task first, so that way we can uh, address new information or we need to adapt the task, we have free time to do it. And if the deadline, and this is key, if the deadline can be challenged, because it needs to be released for any marketing reason, we should challenge the scope that will be delivered at that time. Uh, even we can decide to have multiple milestones, okay, this is going to be delivered on the first release and this will going to be delivered after and so on. And it's also key that if there are different teams involved in the same project, that the milestones are a shared uh, objective. So you don't have one team working on the products and the other team working on the API if there's no match between them. And we need to say no to new requirements or at least to challenge them. And please mind the time that we have invest on the task or on those items, even if they have not been started yet from the development point of view. Sometimes or when you are working in Agile, you have the backlog, and it looks like you can change any backlog task uh, within the same scope, but maybe you have invested several hours then trying to analyze uh, that specific item. So it's something cheap to change things. Next topic is about the poorly refined, uh, defined requirements. And requirements that are not clearly defined are a recipe for failure. It's common, like uh, empty, cards in Jira or any other tool, but uh, it's more common the absence or real examples of use cases. We just uh, have like some ACIPTA criteria, but there are not real cases that the uh, developers could understand and even to know the why it's been needed. We need uh, stakeholders' involvement in the project. Like the requirements should not be something written down in a document that everyone should follow. There will be always the possibility to challenge those requirements and even improve them. Uh, everyone should understand the complexity of the, of the project on the different parts of it. And if we have frequent changes in the requirements, it will be quite difficult to plan resources and to plan uh, releases or to plan everything. Regarding requirements, uh, we have the scope creep I'm going to cover later on, but basically if no one knows what's been expected, it's impossible to fulfill the, the requirement. And of course, there will be misalignments on the contract level because there will be blurry boundaries regarding what's been included in the project, what's not, what is a bug, which is a missing feature, with something that needs to be done, with something that is an extra cost, um, and so on. So, first of all, we need to set clear expectations. We need to understand, fully understand, which are the goals and the objectives of this project. We also need to define a requirement management process, because the first document that we have in the tender, on the RFP, or whatever, is not enough. We need to discuss each requirement with the client and explore what's been needed behind. And we should have, as an, as an organization, a definition already. It's like the the minimal information that um, uh, an item should have in order to schedule for the next, next sprint. We need to involve the right people on those uh, kind of uh, meetings. Uh, we use, for example, the backward refinement meeting. Um, and it's key that the people that will, uh, that's needed are, are there. So it's better if you send them an agenda so you make sure that all people that need to be there are there. We can be helped by prototyping and mock-ups to help to visualize and to get feedback as soon as possible of the things we would like to achieve. Even better, if we are able to use written executable specifications uh, like Gherkin. Uh, right now, my partner is giving a session of uh, VHAT testing on a workshop, 
uh, that it's uh, basically focused on how to write specifications in order to allow a uh, machine to read those uh, different uh, sentences and, uh, and apply them directly in the browser. And if we have no clue what needs to be done, we should iterate. Sometimes when you are involved in a project, you don't know what's going to happen next. So start small, iterate in the first sprint, and you will evolve. It's, sometimes it's not possible to get all the definition of the products of your project or the, any, any feature. So the idea is to go incremental. OK, the scope creep. The most important thing to do if you find yourself in a hole is to stop digging. So the scope creep is like a silent intruder in your project, gradually accumulating changes and additions that weren't initially planned. So a scope creep will, of course, create extra cost, project delays, and missing deadlines. The quality will be compromised because more work needs to be done, deadline has not been moved, budget has not been moved, then we need to take some shortcuts. And the team will be frustrated. They will need a clear path of things that needs to be done. So the strategies that we should follow is, of course, is to have a clear the scope and objectives, other, as on the previous uh, points, and we should challenge any new request. It does not mean that we should say no to new request. It means that we should have a change control process. So we analyze the impact of each change before we accept it into the scope. We should prioritize. I mean, not all changes are equal. And even sometimes when you are working in a project with a client and you have previously specified a certain criteria for this specific iteration, then that task is being presented to the client and then the client starts asking for new kind of things. Okay, this is the next iteration of, the, of that uh, specific feature that could be uh, scheduled for the next sprint or not because those new requirements are not as important as other things you could have your backlog. And of course, you should monitor your progress. I compare what, where you are with the initial plan and not, notice any significant deviation. Lack of flexibility, which is mainly the opposite of the scope creep. The bamboo that bends is the strongest. So when we have a lack of flexibility, it could come from both parts, stakeholders and development team. If the stakeholders are not flexible, we will need to implement always ad hoc solutions because they will not adapt what's been there. For example, in Drupal, we have several modules that could be used. So achieving maybe the 80% of the project at first is quite easy, but going into the details takes ages sometimes. So, if the client is flexible on their expectations and requirements, we have the possibility to invest that time in adding more value to the project and not to adapting the web form module to behave exactly as the designer thought. Uh, if there is no lack of flexibility, we will need to do some workarounds, even to patch modules and, and so on, which will increase the technical depth. It will be quite hard to uh, maintain those modules in the future. And of course, the team morale will decrease because the, the team will need, in order to take the ownership and provide creative solutions, they should be allowed to suggest new things. <coughs> and from the client point of view, we will have the satisfaction as if the development team are quite strict with the initial scope we are going to lose uh, opportunities. We are going to uh, don't evolve with the customers, which is something that we cannot afford now, nowadays. And of course, contract friction. What can be applied? Of course, <coughs> agile methodologies, whatever you would like to use. We should adjust requirements and scope by the new information. 
We should establish the change management process and analyze for their impact and also to work in a risk management plan and anticipate all potential risk and try to mitigate them. And we should explore also agile contracts. There are alternatives to the common fixed price contract. So I think that we are all aware of the time and materials, but there are other models like time and materials with a spending selling. So the, the stakeholders know which is the limit that will be spent in the project. We can be paid by sprint, but there are also another alternatives like the fixed profit. Like since the beginning of the project, you define with the stakeholders what's going to be the profit of the project, and then you charge them only the cost per hour, the real cost per hour. So if the project goes longer, the client is not losing more money, but you are not also losing money. <coughs> Inadequate resources. Necessity is the mother of invention. So we could have inadequate or limited resources because of lack of time, of budget, team expertise, of team capacity. Because of that, we'll have unrealistic expectations in the scope, on deadlines, and budget. We'll have delays because it will take longer to complete the work. We'll have poor quality or technical depth because of lack of specific knowledge. Even we, without time to test things properly or bugs, then there will be flaws in the, in the software. And we will reduce innovation. That will likely, it will be less likely to meet the user needs. So the strategies are, we should prioritize, prioritize be flexible, and we need to focus our resources in the most critical areas. Sometimes there's lots of noise when we are building a project. Everyone is sharing their thoughts. But as a manager, we need to find which are the key points and focus on them all. We need to estimate realistically based on our uh, real situation. And we need to take into account the complexity of the, of the project. And the complexity could be a technical complexity or even a team complexity, maybe the, the client has several teams that need to align first or there are lots of dependencies uh, and so on. We should be honest with the stakeholders and be open about the limitations of the project. Sometimes it could be a limitations on their side and we are the ones that should point in, uh, about them. If needed, we can outsource, and even better, we can cross-train our team. So we have, we develop a more flexible and uh, skilled workforce. And every time it's possible, we should automate. So we free our team to focus on the most important work. We can automate updates, we can automate uh, testing, we can automate several things. Insufficient communication. As you know, as a managers, we need to deal with humans. We are still there. Who knows what will happen with the AI, but right now. <laughs> so communication is not what you say, it's what the other person understands. So there will be misunderstandings uh, that will produce lots of waste. It will be probably poor coordination that will uh, make missed deadlines and scope creep. Probably there will be some conflict between the team members and the stakeholders. And people will decrease their morale as they will feel that they are not being heard. Like, I've told you that before and no one listened to me, so now right now we are failing in something that we raised weeks ago. So, so that's key that everyone is being heard in the, in the team and also in the stakeholders side. So we need to establish regular communication and channels and events. It could be uh, daily meetups uh, daily meetups between the stand-ups between the team or the retrospectives or even uh, any other agile event. We need to encourage open and honest communication 
So everyone is comfortable about asking or even challenging the requirements and sharing their concerns. Uh, we should provide feedback, and this is key. I recommend you all to focus on the positive feedback. If the, if sometimes, as a managers, we tend to blame uh, people that are not doing things properly, and this is not the right path. It's, it's better to focus on the positive things that are, being, are, are working well in the project, so all the people will follow. And please use the right communication tools. You have decided to use uh, Jira, GitLab, or GitHub, or whatever, please avoid uh, using emails or any other kind of thing. Uh, emails, you all know that are dangerous, but the most uh, dangerous thing is like there are only a few people in that email loop. So you will lose all the track of the project of what happened or why this was uh, decided. <coughs> About poor quality, quality control and insufficient testing, like quality is not an act, it's a habit. So, uh, we will challenge reputation issues, increased cost, customer dissatisfaction, and security vulnerabilities. Here we have three examples or top companies that uh, faced um, stock market down of 20%. They needed to ground the entire fleet of their airplane, or they were like a, they had a high damage reputation. So it's just to, we are the ones that need to explain the clients, the stakeholders, how important is quality control. One experience that we had when we uh, provide estimates to the client that sometimes we had uh, the test uh, like in a different uh, batch and clients used to ask us to remove it. Like, okay, we can save 20% of the project, so please remove testing. So what we decided is like it's been included and we don't let them know which is the percentage of the of the testing. But you should have a plan and a budget for testing. It could be explicit, it could be implicit, but you need it when you're estimating. You should allocate also resources to do it. You need to have this test plan and you can use a different kind of testing testing techniques like unit testing, integrating testing, system testing, acceptance testing, visual regression testing, security testing, all of them are needed, of course, depending of the, of the project. There is a, ter a concept called uh, testing coverage. Uh, I think it's quite impossible to get 100% coverage in all those fields, but it fully depends on, on the kind of project we are working on. You should focus on, on that specific things. For example, you are working on an e-commerce, then buying a product is key, should be tested. If you are working in a corporate site that creates a news, then news are key, so it needs to, needs to be tested. Probably the key is what could happen uh, that, uh, that will make my client to call me at 3 a.m. in the morning. Those, all those things should be tested. And of course, you can you should automate all the tests so you avoid manual errors. And you should involve the whole team, even stakeholders, on the on the quality control. They should all be aware of the benefits, or they should be all aware of the challenges if they are not uh, applying or they are not they don't agree to invest time on on testing. And last but not least, team member to over. People leave managers, not companies. So we have a lower morale, increased stress because of the work. When we lose someone, we are losing also their experience on the, on the specific project, but also their skills on, on the team. We will have a decrease productivity because we will invest time finding someone new and to train in the, in the project and also to onboard in the projects uh, that person is going to <coughs> participate. And of course, as a company, it will be even more difficult to attract new talent. 
What can we do? Create a positive work environment where everyone feels respected and valued. Everyone is compensated fairly. There in, in your company, there is a career goals and people can uh, develop new challenges and responsibilities. We should reward publicly accomplishment. And it, this is key. We should promote, promote as uh, managers healthy work-life balance, flexible work, and we should discourage overwork. So what are the next steps that you can take? Of course, all the previous ones, but the ones that I recommend to start with. Set realistic deadlines. Gather feedback early and often from stakeholders, from what you have learned of the previous sprint, uh, new concerns that the team is uh, finding in the project, new opportunities, new market opportunities, and so on. We will be willing, willing to say no, or at least to explain the client why it's not a good idea or the impact in the project, and if they accept, let's go. We should accommodate change. We should encourage communication and collaboration. Allocate adequate resources. Have a robust quality control process. And of course, recognize team members' achievements and for their contributions. So thank you. And share your thoughts or what questions do you have? to ask anything or share any thought? Uh, you can ask questions through the app or is the microphone on? Uh, I think so. Yeah, you can ask questions through the app or you can, I can bring you the microphone. Any? Over here. Real life is better. <laughs> um, hello. Hello. So, uh, very interesting. There, there is few things um, because I worked with junior, junior teams, senior teams, uh, 15 years old uh, developers, or five years old, three years old. What I, what I find, uh, find a bit complex is sometimes like the, sometimes like the, the guilt is often in, in the terms of the stakeholders or the customers. Developers are more, have less, maybe an Android developer as well, have less uh, tendency to accept also that there is um, lacks in the understanding of the process as well. By example, I think there is, even for 15 years or 20 years uh, developers, they have complexity to understand also the estimate, the estimate because um, even if we think in terms of sprints, of story points, and you can declare what is like the complexity of a task, you must estimate this task. No client or no um, no stakeholder will accept that you say, I will develop until this is done. I need to say, in the terms of the sprint, I will achieve something. So the developers have difficulty to understand that sometimes a sprint is a deadline. It's not like just a, a rhythm or a, a technique or an up, a meeting. It's a deadline in the fact. You must say what you are able to do in the terms of the hours or days that uh, compose the sprint. Uh, and this is an interesting point because there is uh, sometimes a lack of involvement. It's difficult for the developers to understand. The estimate are one of the biggest issues with the developers I, f I found my for myself also, it was complicated. Uh, the other thing is Gherkin. I, think I, I find Gherkin like a good concept, very, very complex to apply in reality. To take like someone that is not technical and say you will learn a language that is not that easy. It's, also, it's always English, it's uh, understand, but to apply it, because we de describe together the scenario that will be like the test, it's very complex to apply. So you can, you can use BR, you can use like end-to-end uh, -end testing, user acceptance testing, but it will at the end be complicated to apply Gherkin as a, as a like <laughs> neutral language, in my, in my experience. Uh, and last, uh, uh, it's, I think one of, one of the points that is missing is also like the over-testing. I think like one of the things that developers do uh, often is to over-test. So they will test from, uh, so by, on Drupal, by example, you will test that the click will open this window, this window will open this message, this message, uh, and if you click submit, will do this. So you are testing not only your, your development, you are testing the whole application. 
every time. You are testing that the click of Drupal is working, you are, you are, that the Ajax response will come, and then, so the over-testing is also something that, uh, especially on Drupal, because it's not the same with all uh, technology, it uh, can cost a lot in, in terms of management. Okay, uh, just a few comments on, on your words. Uh, I, I, have, I think that we have all uh, suffered uh, the same issues. Uh, regarding the, the, the first point about uh, the team not achieving uh, sprint goals, recently uh, what I started doing is uh, asking the team to finalize all uh, items, but with the possibility to discuss requirements with me anytime. So, uh, requirements or accepting criteria are flexible. Sometimes when you are, as a manager, we set specific uh, expectations or create a different accepting criteria, you are not aware, even that you could be uh, a technical person, that sometimes things are more complex than you thought and sometimes are not really needed. Or maybe something that could be done later on or this is something that can be challenged with the stakeholders. So when, uh, sometimes when the team are not able to end uh, all the items uh, in the sprint is because they were blocked by something. So open that channel of uh, discussing why, what's blocking them, and then discuss if something that should be moved or, or not. So I've, I've seen that uh, splitting features into different uh, iterations uh, helps to increase morale in the team because they see that something has been finished, it's been delivered, maybe it's not released on production, but they see that advance. If not, it's like uh, maybe that task, that item were there like a fourth sprint and we will be forever uh, there. Regarding testing, uh, we, in our, we strongly believe in, 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 in BDD approach, I mean to create a test first, uh, because it helps the developers to fully understand what's been needed. So sometimes just greeting down the test, even if it's not going to be run in an automatic way, but just using that Gherkin syntax help all to understand what are the expectations and also to find the edge cases of the, of the, of the project. Which for me makes no sense is to add tests after you have done something. Like, I mean, if it is working, why is you are going to, I mean, for thinking on the maintenance in the future, maybe, maybe it makes sense, but you are losing that, uh, that boost. For example, when you are writing down, as you said, like uh, the user clicks in this button and then um, there's you know, a card that opens and can see the card that has, has added, the item has been added to the card and so on. I think it's good to test that because if it is not automatically being tested, the, de the developer will need to do that manually several times. In the end, it will take longer. And at the same time, of course, Drupal is based on different components, but we need to test the end-to-end. -end, um, of course, we have the unit testing, we have the kernel testing, we have everything that the, each module should provide. But as a company, I think it's key that we test the full process, like, because next time you upload uh, the new Drupal commerce or you upload the new, uh, I mean, you update a new, any, any kind of component, even now that Drupal use lots of uh, vendor libraries, you never know if it's still working. So at least if this is an e-commerce, uh, our product checkout should be tested. If this is a newspaper, a news creation, deletion, edition, and so on, needs to be tested. Even if you could think that uh, Drupal provides that out of the box, but in reality, as you are going to use different components at the same time, you will need to make sure that the uh, compose of all of them are still working. So we have a question at the front and then a question through the app. Um, thank you for the presentation, great work. Uh, I have a Important question, first one, in your presentation you mentioned that you're a metalhead. I was wondering what type of music do you listen to? Uh, but Which one? What type of a music do you listen to? You ah. mentioned you're a metalhead. But that aside, uh, you know, you came up with a list of items, you know, mostly titles. But I was 
wondering what would be the exact uh, approach in a real world scenario. So for instance, I had a use case that I was working with a developer and uh, we broke down the tickets, all of them, you know, all of them uh, assigned and estimated everything and uh, agreed upon with the developer, we can manage it, we will maintain it. Uh, let's say you need 100 hours to wrap the, uh, all the tickets and here's the deadline and the developer is like, yeah, all good. And then a week passes, uh, no reply, you follow up, yeah, we are there, it's almost there, you know, and then a couple of weeks afterwards, the budget is done, the work progress has been like 20%, what is the appropriate uh, take on that, you know, and this might happen again and again, and at some point, other PMs would like not to work with that certain developer because, well, for the same reasons. Uh, and also another question is that you mentioned you have to keep up the morale, you know, and uh, appreciate the contribution of team players within a team. What are those that you do in MetaDrop, for instance? You know, any examples or whatnot? So, thank you. Okay, uh, regarding uh, a person that is not giving you feedback when something is going wrong, I think that person is feeling fear of recognizing that uh, it's not achieving something. Uh, in MetaDrop, we work as teams. We try to avoid isolating people. So that way, we have always someone that will help you if you are being blocked. So uh, as a manager, uh, we should all create the channels where people feel comfortable uh, being vulnerable. Sometimes, as a developer, we could think that uh, we can do everything. We are superheroes. But even sometimes we are. <laughs> it's not always the rule. So, I mean, uh, I, I suggest to discuss with uh, that specific person to see what's happening, explain to him or to her that it's not the first time that she's not uh, meeting expectations that maybe that person is, uh, uh, is not realistic with the estimation. Maybe the issue is like uh, when you ask them, they feel that pressure that if you, if you let them know that it will take one week, you will be angry some way. So they'll let you know, no, just two days, and then never is uh, two days. Something that we do with the team on the, uh, um, on the, on, ah, on the, on the retrospectives, uh, we sometimes show them the time we have invested on each task. And it's incredible because sometimes they were, I mean, most of the times they were not aware that that specific task take longer because maybe the task itself was quite short, but the QA that was needed for that task was quite long or even the deploy of that task on, on, on so on. And regarding uh, team morale, one thing that's great is, for example, before starting a project, uh, you have explained and you onboard the team into the project, you can ask them directly what they think that they will learn after this project is being done. Sometimes we feel, as a developers, that we are like in this uh, wheel where this one project, then the other, then the other, then the other, and there's no uh, evolution. So if you focus a little bit on what you are going to achieve with this project and after it's been done, you have this retrospective of the project and you can ask them, do you feel stronger than before? That's a, that's a good example. Another thing that we do is like, uh, we use contribution by default, like we try to contribute all the modules that we provide to the, to the custom, but the business logic of the, of, the, of the customers. So that way they are contributing to the community, which is also helps, also helps a lot. In, in this uh, in their morale and, and of course we avoid overwork as much as possible and uh, we give uh, all our uh, team members uh, 10 hours per month to invest in whatever they want which basically normally contributing code and, and so on so they have also flexibility and freedom to do whatever they want So the question uh, from MLR, do you have any advice for dealing with higher management stakeholders that refuse to listen to your suggestions or explanations 
for why you may need more time or resources for a project to succeed. Ooh. Okay. Uh, sometimes it's, it's impossible, okay? Sometimes there are, uh, there are bad clients. This is, this is real. So, but sometimes you cannot get rid of bad clients because sometimes it's a huge percentage of your income. On your, so, uh, I think that you need to invest more time trying to figure it out what's happening on their brains, on their minds, that uh, does not connect. Sometimes people say no because they don't understand, they don't fully understand what's behind. So I, I recommend to approach them individually so that the way they can be more vulnerable. You, will, you like to approach the director of any company with several people in the same table, that person will play the role of the boss and will say no to everything. Maybe you approach that person individually, it will be easier. Um, as I said before, the, the commitments, the projects, um, the budget even, it's a shared commitment. I mean, we have a contract, we are going to do the best, but we, we need your help. We need your direct help on, on, on this, because if not, it's not going to work. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, I don't see any, uh, is there another question or if not, do you want to tell us about your metal preferences? Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jorge.